Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are interested in learning how to password protect your website and you want to learn to do this completely free without needing any kind of extensive coding knowledge, stay tuned on covering the basics in today's video. Now before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. All right, so jumping straight in, we're not covering any kind of advanced security. We're going to be using Firebase as our back end and basically just using the traditional email and password setup there. So one quick note when you're watching this video, make sure you follow any and all applicable laws, rules, regulations, guidelines, etc. for user accounts and data handling and privacy. We aren't going to be covering anything super advanced there. Now, let's go ahead and jump in. So we're going to do this very, very quickly. So first things first, we're going to sign up for our Firebase account, and then we are going to be walking through how to password protect this page here. As you can see, when I refresh the page, we just load up the website itself, which is codelessfix.app. So first thing we're going to do, head on over to Firebase. You can sign in using a Gmail account, sign up for your free account, and then you can click on this authentication tab. If you don't have it already, when you're scrolling through, you can go to your project overview or the home page. And as you're scrolling through, you may see an arrow. Under the build section, you can click authentication. If you do not have authentication already selected, then you can click enable and just set up your sign-in method to be this email and password. Usually when you set it up for the first time, you'll get a page that looks like this, although it could change over time. You just want this email and password option for today's video. Then you're gonna to want to add a user account by clicking on this button and setting it up. Once that's done, you'll need to go to your project settings. And then when you're in this page, you'll need to click add app and choose the web app option if you do not already have it or haven't already done this. Follow the on-screen prompts. Once this is done, you should end up with a page that looks like this. These portions or this bit of data here is what we're going to need in a couple of minutes. So you can go ahead and highlight that and then set this tab to the side. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to walk through the chat GPT prompts that I use to make this, but I will be providing two different websites with the source code that we're going to be using for today's video. I want to walk through the prompts because there are most of you are, are honestly probably going to want to make some kind of a change to this functionality or the web pages or whatever the case may be. So I want you to have a way to access this and modify it yourself. So at the top of this page, here's the prompt that I used for chat GPT. And then you'll see this is the code for the login page that was provided. I went through a couple of things with ChatGPT, a couple bits of information like what does the page need to be named, how do I need to make this work, troubleshooting some basic issues, and then you'll see that we have a little bit of additional code that was provided here. And then the final thing that I had an issue with was it wasn't redirecting to the index.html page. So for your normal website, when someone accesses whatever your website is, in our case for today's video, codelessfix.app, they get access to this index.html page. What we are going to be doing is modifying the code in this page to require the user be logged in. And then we're going to have a login page where if they aren't logged in, it'll send them to that page once they log in, it sends them back here. Originally in the correspondence with ChatGPT, the login button was redirecting the user to a different website, which was homepage.html. You don't want that in this case because that page is not password protected or it wasn't. So we'll walk through this a little bit more in detail, but if you want a more secure method or you just want a single password and username, I'll put a link to another video in the description that I go through setting that up using the HT access and password. All right, so now that we've gone through the basics of how we got to where we are now, we're gonna go ahead and make our code modifications to our site. So when you're logged in to your website builder, in my case, I'm using Hostinger. If you wanna sign up, you can go to codelessfix.app and or codelessfix.com there's an about us section with an affiliate link section. If you sign up there, I will get a portion of the profit from that sign up. I don't know if you'll get a discount or not, so you'll just need to make sure you check the pricing, but that is one way for you to sign up. If you already have an account or whatever website builder you're using, you should have a similar interface. So the first thing that we're gonna do is create our login file or our login page. So you can just click new file 
or you can build this in a text editor, whichever you prefer. And we're just going to call this login.html. And then you can click create. And you'll put this in the home directory where you have your index.html file. Now, once we do this, I'll provide these two links in the description. The first is the modification to your index.html file. The second is the login page. So what we're going to go ahead and do, we'll go ahead and grab all of this text here. And then we are going to go to our login page that we just created and paste it in. Now, you'll see right here, I have some text that says here, here, here. And it says here a couple more times, and that's the API key and the app ID and a couple of bits of information in between. This will look familiar as it's what we made in Firebase earlier. So we will go copy that, come over here, paste it in, and click Save. Now, <clears throat> if you want to modify your login page, you can edit the HTML code here. But we're keeping it simple, so we've already saved it. We will now close it, and you'll see it's right here. Now we need to modify our index.html. Now in this case, I already have a decent bit of code here and I don't wanna make things more complicated than they need to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna find the first head tag and you'll need to do this in whatever way is easiest for you that also allows your website to function. In this case, I'm just gonna put a couple character returns. This is not the best way to do it, but for simplicity's sake, this is what we're gonna do. Now we're going to grab our index.txt content and we're going to copy this. Now I will paste it in here and you'll see we have the gap up top and down below. So this is the code that's been added. And then we have the section right here that we need to update once more. So we'll grab it from Firebase, head back over here, paste it in here and click save. So at this point, what we should be seeing <clears throat> when we access codelessfix.app is now we get this login page. So let's test it and make sure that it's working correctly. So what we'll do is we will type in something along the lines of, we'll use a user account just so you can see this in action. We have a at a.com. So let's type in a at a.com. And I want to show you how you can manage this. So we're going to click Disable Account and click Disable. And then I'm going to type in the correct password and click Login. Now you'll see in this case nothing's happening, which is expected behavior. So now we're going to go to Enable Account. And then we're going to click Login. And you'll see it logs in. And now we are accessing the home page. So everything appears to be working as expected. This page is loading. Now, in some cases, one, one thing to note is you don't want to have your login page and your home page set up in a way where the home page doesn't require the login. So what I mean by that is the reason we added this code to our index.html file is so that it requires the user to be logged in. You'll see we're checking the authentication state. If you were to add a separate page for your home page and have all these redirects, users may be able to find out what that URL is and access it directly. So in this case, for example, if I close this page and I open a new incognito window and I paste in directly to the file that we're trying to access, you'll see that this login page appears. So that's something that you're going to want to remember is if you're just redirecting, users can find the second page and bypass the first one. Now, another thing to note is this only requires a user to log in to access the home page of your website. It doesn't require it for other pages of the website. So an example would be if we want to find page two. So I'm not sure which page this is. I haven't really tried this out too much, but the idea is we have quite a few different pages. So what we can do in this case is we will open a new incognito window. And again, this is not the best way, but it is an option. So we're going to go to codelessfix.app. <clears throat> we'll type in our sample username, our sample password. And you'll see when we log in, we go to our index.html page. And we land here. 
Now if I click this image on the left, you'll see we are navigated to page four. So what we can do is we can find page four over here and you'll see we have a couple of different options. So let's find page four. And then again, this may not be the most user-friendly way to do this, but what we can do is take the code from our index file and add it into this page. So you'll see we have our head tag. So just as we did before, add in a couple spaces. We can paste this code in. We can then grab our information from our project settings. And we can go down and find the few bits that we need right here. And basically this could be added to any page that you need to ensure the user is logged into. So we will paste this information in here. And just to show how this works, here's a quick example. If we go into a new incognito window and we paste in the direct URL, the user is able to bypass the login screen because they know the URL to the next page. So we're hard coding the login requirement. So let's go ahead and save this change and then refresh this page and you'll see it now requires a login. So in this case, you would be able to have the user login. So for example, a at a.com, and then we type in, so we're typing in a fake email and our password. In this case, it forces the user to go back to the home screen. So you may want to adjust the logic on that, but now that the user has logged in and been authenticated, they can access any page on the site. So in this particular case, you can add in the code from the index page that I've shared onto the HTML code for every single individual page of your website, and that will require the login page to be accessed and the user to be authenticated. And as you can see, it's not easily bypassed. And then the idea is you add it to any page you want the user to require authentication to. If you want to build it out so it redirects the user to that page, you can. But I found that it appears like we've tested here. Once the user's logged in, they can access those other URLs directly if they want to, like we just did. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. Don't forget to check out codelessfix.com and careerbuilderhq.com, and I'll see you all in the next video.